Hey y'all, it's Shasha from Busy Being Shasha. And today is post-op day five, oh my gosh, after having my laparoscopic myomectomy. And I'm so happy I'm fibroid free now, yay. Um, so basically, I really just wanted to do this video because when I was preparing to have my surgery, I just had like so many questions about what to expect, especially like after the recovery, um, like how bad the pain would be. And a lot of those questions, I knew I wasn't gonna have my doctor answer. And I went to like a lot of different um, groups on Facebook to try to ask questions for people that had the surgery. And it was really hard to kind of get answers. So I felt like this video would be a great way for any of y'all that are going to have a myomectomy to, re to remove fibroids. But basically what you can expect, I opted to have a lapar I can't even say the word, a laparoscopic <laughs> myomectomy versus the open surgery. So originally my OBGYN wanted to do an open myomectomy where they basically give you a C-section cut and instead of taking out a baby, they take out fibroids. Well, I was really worried about a six to eight week recovery and I just knew that that really wasn't something that I wanted to do. I got a second opinion from another doctor um, who is like the LeBron James of robo robotic surgery and basically said that I was a candidate um, to remove my fibroids laparoscopically. So basically where the doctor will go in with the camera and make a couple um, smaller paper clip size incisions and take the fibroids out um, versus having the big cut. Um, I did an ultrasound with him, did all my pre-op appointments, went to the hospital to get an EKG done, um, to get my blood checked, all that good stuff and was approved to go. I'm just gonna start with basically the day of surgery and kind of just run through things there. If you want to see just a detailed breakdown of what my pain level was day to day of my recovery, you can head on to my blog where I'm like detailing everything for you because it's a lot. So basically on the day of my surgery, my surgery was at 7 a.m. I got there at 5.30 and it was pretty much like uneventful. Basically just did um, like last minute paperwork and everything, did my copay. And I want to say like probably around mm, six o'clock, I went back, changed into my gown, all that good stuff. Um, the nurse got the IV prepped um, and then the anesthesiologist came in who was super sweet, like seriously, the sweetest anesthesiologist in the world basically said that they were going to give me um, general anesthesia. I know some people opt to get the spinal anesthesia. They really didn't give me um, that option for the surgery, so I just went ahead with the general. And yeah, basically she gave me a good old cocktail. And um, the last thing I remember was being wheeled down to the OR and kind of just like waving to, you know, different um, nurses and doctors that were in the hallway as I was going there, like, hey, hey, you know, and they're waving to me. And I just remember like passing out, like being asleep before I even made it to the OR. So the next thing I knew I was in the recovery room. Like my first concern was, oh my gosh, did I have the laparoscopic surgery? Um, because at my pre-op appointment, I gave my doctor consent that if he couldn't get the fibroids out robotically, that he could go ahead and do the open surgery. And like my biggest fear was that something would happen and I'd just wake up with this horrible incision and a horrible recovery. So that was like the first thing I asked the nurse and she said that they were able to do everything laparoscopically. And I felt like this huge urge to use the bathroom. Like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was gonna pee on myself. And I just told the nurse, I'm like, I need to use the bathroom like ASAP. So she helped me like get up and it was really painful, but I was able to like hobble to the bathroom um, and went. And that was basically the biggest thing on my homework. Um, my doctor like said, like as long as everything went perfectly with the surgery, that there weren't any complications and I could use the restroom. So I used the bathroom, um, came back, like I think I had some cookies and some apple juice. I was like tearing the apple juice up. It was the best thing ever because I had been fasting pretty much um, since midnight the night before. And yeah, I just remember seeing my husband, um, you know, a couple of family members came in to check on me, you know, two at a time. Um, some members of my kingdom hall, my uncle, just everyone was really glad that the surgery went well. Um, the doctor basically ended up moving, removing three fibroids instead of two. So yes, I had an extra fibroid to try to slip all up in there, but you gone, boo, you gone, you really tried it, but my OB got you. <laughs> so um, my doctor ended up move, removing three and the surgery was supposed to take an hour, but it ended up taking like two and a half hours because of the third fibroid. So I don't really remember like how long I was in the hospital. I only felt like I was there for a short time, but my husband said like I was there for a few hours before I went home. 
Okay, so basically when it got time to go home, remember like being rolled in this wheelchair and one of the things I had in the car in preparation for the ride home was this pillow. So if you are scheduled to have a myomectomy, a pillow is like your best friend because just like everything hurts. Like when you try to put the seatbelt on, it's like just pressure on your incision. Not as bad when you have the laparoscopic surgery because you have a lot of smaller incisions, but I have like one incision that's really, really low and I just don't want like anything up against it. So you definitely want a pillow, especially if you're having an open surgery, just so you can just hold everything in. Like coughing hurts so much the first few days, laughing, like, don't even try to laugh at anything because it's going to hurt. Sneezing, hold it in. Coughing, hold it in. Like, just keep a pillow pretty much just with you. So I had the pillow with me um, when I got in the car. Like, really, in terms of pain, I think the worst thing ever that I have been dealing with is the gas pain. So you got to think that basically when they go in there to see your uterus and all that good stuff, they fill your stomach up with air. And although they try to get some of the air out, like when they're almost done with the surgery, they can't get like all those little pockets. So you can end up having just really horrible like gas pain. Like mine has just been terrible, like right up in here on my shoulders. And now it's like finally starting to move down to my stomach. But it is the worst. Like the gas pain honestly is worse than like any of the pain or soreness from the incisions. So definitely when you get home, you want to make sure you have some gas X. Um, I tried this like maybe on day two because that's when like my gas pain was the worst and it was kind of helpful but a lot of people in some of my Facebook groups that have had the surgery said like that gas sex has like worked wonders for them so definitely give it a try to you know just try to help with the gas pain also like ginger ale has been a lifesaver just trying to burp and just exude some of that air and TMI alert like I can't hold this back i'm just keeping it real but you honestly are not going to start to feel like a relief from the gas until it comes out like just real talk you will start to feel like a new person once the gas gets out so i'll also recommend um peppermint tea i know like a lot of people said that that works for them so definitely make sure you have that on hand and smooth move tea you can find that at like walmart kroger um, that'll kind of just help like get your bowels going and help some of that gas moving and just walking like as much as it hurts to walk and it's probably not something that you want to do just like getting up and moving it kind of just gets some of that gas moving and that helps another thing that my husband did that was like absolutely was amazing is he got me these papaya enzyme pills and these pills are the bomb like no lie these papaya enzymes will get you right so TMI alert come like day three I was in agony because I have felt like just super constipated the gas pain was out of control um I think the night of day three I have to look back at my blog post like I got super nauseous I ended up like just throwing up and it was just like really bad and I just felt like I wasn't gonna make it so my husband ended up giving getting me some of these papaya enzymes and I basically just started taking them like after every meal and just was burping and like finally I had a bowel movement and I don't care if this is TMI I'm sorry but seriously these pills will help you out tremendously and I've been taking them every day just to make sure like you know digestive stuff is going but make sure that you get you some papaya enzymes y'all they are like amazing um another thing that you'll definitely want um is Miralax sure you probably know what Miralax is I don't have to go into detail but the Miralax will definitely help you too um, with the process because it's it's just not easy so other things that you need to do okay my nurse at the hospital was a little stingy but one of the things that I saw a lot of girls in um, the abdominal myomectomy support group say was that you need some granny panties because you're really not gonna want anything on your incision so for all the girls that are getting like an open myomectomy, you definitely want to go with a high waist panty. Um, for me, since my incisions are kind of high, I'm trying to do like low cut everything, low cut all day. So before you leave the hospital, they're probably going to put some of these on you. When you wake up, make sure you get the mesh panties. See these like 
beautiful little mesh boy shorts. Well, I don't even know if they that. But these panties are super comfortable. Um, they won't bother your incisions or anything. And just like tell the nurse like, hey, can I have a few pairs of these mesh underwear just to take home? Um, a lot of times if your nurse is stingy like mom was, just go in the drawer and get them. That's what I did. I mean, I done paid this big bill. Y'all gonna give me three pairs of these underwear to take home, okay? So um, don't leave the hospital without getting some of these because they're just super comfortable. They're gonna make everything just so easier um, once you get home. Other thing too, I don't want y'all to sleep on. This heating pad. Oh my gosh, my heating pad is like a bay, bay, okay, bay. I will like fight somebody right now if they try to take away my heating pad. So my heating pad has been like detrimental for just fighting the gas pain. I put it on my shoulder. I put it on my stomach and it just makes everything just feel just so, so, so much better. Um, also make sure you keep an ice pack on hand too. I've been using that um, for swelling kind of just on and off as needed with the heating pad, but I definitely use my heating pad probably like more than anything. So these are just a few of the things I have in my arsenal. Um, for my recovery, for my laparoscopic myomectomy, I will be doing another update. Um, this is post-op day five. Been feeling pretty good today. Um, feel like a lot of my energy is back. No shoulder pain with the gas, just a little bit of my tummy. And some soreness. So y'all will definitely be okay. Um, stay tuned for another update video and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.